Hello and welcome back to the shop. I've uh, been doing a bit of work on the planer again. I've been working on the tool head. You might be able to see some scraping marks on the front face of the tool slide there. What I've had to do is to scrape that face and the back face of the actual tool holder, the clapper itself. What I found was that when I tightened the original bolt up here, which was a cap screw, which is not very good, when I tightened that up, this sort of kicked out at the bottom. And when I checked the face on this, it was three thousands out. Uh, so what I did, I scraped that in. And then what I did as well is I checked that. And believe it or not, that was three thousandths of an inch out as well. So it was bowed like that. And that was bowed like that. Obviously over the years, 125 years, there's been stress relieving in these components. We've no idea what kind of a life they've had. And they worked extremely hard under a lot of uh, force. Obviously that will take its toll in time. So anyway, we've scraped down two faces and I'm pretty pleased with how they are. I've done some other work on it. I've obviously made new studs for this. I made new keep plates which go inside, which I'll just show you. That's these here, these little keep plates. They fit inside and allow this to swivel one way or the other way, very poor. It looks like these are not the original ones. Somebody's made these and done a really bad job of them. So we've got some really nice fitting ones in there, much bigger than these now. I'm using as much surface area as I can. So we've got much better fitting. Uh, so I'm really pleased with that. We will sometime in the future need to think about scraping all the V slides in all the ways here and do these as well, but that's the job for the future. What I want to do is get it running first. This isn't causing me a problem at the moment. We'll have to see when we start running. So what I'm going to do is just check things over. You'll see I've got a piece of bar now. This is a piece of flame cut, mild steel. And it's black, uh, black bar. So, well, not black bar, but black plate and it's been flame cut. We've got a scale on here. We're gonna be careful with the scale. We need to remove that and get below that. We won't be taking a five or 10 thou cut. We probably need to take about 25, 30 thousands. But I'm conscious as to the amount of load I can put on this yet. I don't know how, how much I can push the machine yet. We'll have to see. You can see what I've done is I've fastened it down. I've made a clamp, two dowels here, T-nut there and a stud and that's all secure. These are secure down this side. There are wedges, taper wedges down here. And around the back, driving it forward, I've got two taper wedges in here, pushing it forward. So it should be pretty secure. We'll see how we go with this. I've no idea how it's gonna perform yet, but we'll get, uh, we'll get a tool fitted in. We'll get everything sorted out ready. I'll lubricate everything up. It needs a good oiling now. And we'll see how it, uh, how it goes, all right. All right, we're ready to start now. I've adjusted the, the bridge here, the cross slide. I've brought it down so it's in close proximity to the work, the tool is. And then what I've done is I've fed the tool down a little touch until it's just touching. You can see the line in the middle here. Obviously that plate is, uh, is bowed. But we're ready to take our first cuts on this machine now. I've put about a 30,000 depth of cut on. Uh, this thread here is 3 8 UNC, so it's 16 TPI, so one revolution is 62 and a half thousands. So I could go halfway, that's um, 30, thereabouts, 30 thousands. Right, so we're ready for start on this, let's try it. Let's go. Let's see what it's like. no idea how this is going to perform now. I can see it's just touching now. Let's take that out of the way just in case. There you go. Just touching there. Nice slow machine this. Designed in the days when we had high carbon tool steel, not uh, high speed steel. They weren't designed to run fast, them kind of tools weren't. 
and let's just watch the mechanism for reverse it. There you go, putting the feed on now. There you are. Taking a nice cut there. Nice and steady. This cut will be actually getting below that uh, that scale, and that's exactly what we need to do. And this is a roughing tool that we're using now. We want to get underneath that scale and rough the material off. And you can see with it being a flame cut blank, it's not square, it's not parallel. We've got uh, no idea what it's like. Hence the need to take a few cuts off it to true it all up. That's looking pretty good so far. I have oiled everything up as well, and I've put some cutting oil across the face of the uh, of the bar. Look at that peeling that chip off quite nice there. That tool is sharp as well. I've put it on the, the grind. It's a brand new tool. But I've put it on the grinder and I've put it on the oil stone as well. To get a nice keen edge, which is exactly what we want. Nothing worse than a blunt tool. They yeah, are peeling chips off quite nice there. Beautiful. There you are, nice cut. It's cut, it looks like it's cutting for the full length now. There you go. This is only driven by a one horsepower motor above flat belt drive so we are going to lose some power through the drive itself there's always some slippage with flat belts but it's doing well I'm really pleased with that that's cutting beautifully that is you can see all my fixtures I've got there everything wedged in can't move when we've done this pass, we'll check all them wedges to be sure everything's okay. And depending on how the, the surface looks, we might use a finishing tool and take a finishing pass too. I don't intend to just machine this away to, uh, to nothing. What I will do with these blocks here, they'll become uh, useful for uh, tool holding and things of this nature textures, all that kind of thing. Always using uh, material for tool fixtures and stuff like that. So it will get used for something. But that's beautiful. I could perhaps increase the feed rate, but I don't particularly want to do that just yet. I am trying to look to see what the, uh, the pitch is. I think it's a 10 TPI thread that on the cross slide, so I could work out what it um, what it's feeding. It's easy to just take a dial test indicator on it. Tell you straight away what it's feeding. Now you see the gear wheel there when it's rotating that gear wheel there. That shaft has the feed mechanism on the other side attached to it. It's there, look. And all that has inside is a, is a leather friction disc so that it rotates now, but now it's just slipping. It's a really oily, leathery slip disc, that's all. It's just slipping now. There's nothing else happened, just slipping. And when it reverses, there you are, it's moving, now it's slipping. It's just a slipping clutch, that's all. Nothing special. There you are, it's cutting full depth of the tool now, which is easily a 30 second. Put 
back out for the table and clean out your picture. Please with that. Watch us to see the lever on the side here, which is the forward and reverse mechanism. Watch as the catch comes along, operates it, moves all the mechanism inside, and removes the belt from one pulley to the other. Watch it again. There you go. All right, it's a bit later on now. I've had one or two issues with the automatic feed. It's not uh, been feeding properly, a lot of slipping down the bottom and it seems very stiff at times. But, yeah, it's, feeding, it's actually taking it back, it's put a cut on and it took some off. So I'm not happy with that at all, I need to sort that out, there's nothing, something wrong with that. But it's cutting very well at the moment. You can see there, it's still cutting okay. There you go. Yeah, it seems to put a cut on and takes off a cut off. So we'll have a look at that, we'll sort that out. Alright, we're a bit further along now. It seems to be working okay now. Uh, still a little bit of a hiccup with that automatic feed. You might see it just turn back on itself. See, just puts a cut on and takes it back just a little bit. Oh, always at that point on the in the rotation. But I need to sort that out anyway. I know the nut and the screw is worn on that. Uh, I've, put, I've made a new bracket for there, for here, I made a new bracket. I've got new bushes I've put in and various other things. So probably still running in as well, so everything's a little bit tight. But it seems free enough, but um, a little bit too free. And obviously when you'll we'll put a cut on now, you'll see the cut go on now. There you go, the cut's on. And then you'll see when it returns. I see it takes it off a little bit. So you might put say 10 thou on and it's backing it off perhaps two or three. But anyway, it seems to be working okay. It's a slow process, but that's the way things were back in 1900. And you can see why, you know, it's taken quite a while to get this far. I have been messing around with things, trying to get things sorted out, getting a better feel for the machine. Uh, it's taken me a while to get this far, but obviously you, you can see as if, you know, nowadays, if you've got a bar like this to machine, it's easier on the milling machine. You've got these multiple cutter heads, especially the uh, indexable tooling. You know, with a big uh, milling machine, it'll tear through that no problem at all. But in the old days, this was the state-of-the-art stuff, and they did the job. You think all the machines and equipment out there all built on things like this. Anyway, we'll keep going. Alright, still going strong. It's peeling off a beautiful chip there, nice and steady. It's interesting to see that it doesn't throw the chips all over the workshop. It just takes the cuts, just drops them and lets go of them. It's interesting, I haven't seen any swarf get stuck in the wheel. I've seen one or two bits hit the wheel, but because of the speed of the wheel, it just deflects them out of the way, which is good. I've got one or two bits in here, but that's not a problem. Really, virtually nothing gets in there. Oh, that's cutting really nice. I'll swap some of the stuff off here. There's getting quite a lot of uh, swarf on there, but it's, it's running quite well.
Okay, there we are, that's that finished. Right, that's the first major work this machine's probably done in a long, long time. It's the first time I've used a metalworking planer. So I'm quite, uh, I'm quite pleased with that. Everything looks okay. We'll be taking another cut, going back this way. We can use the same tool uh, just to make sure that everything is, is okay. And then we'll be flipping it over and we'll machine the other side. But that'll be for another day. Okay, thanks. Bye.